Welcome back, Zero K fans. Nanalith is done, and this is Shadow Fury 333, your host. And to the last game of Akinem and Google Frog, we have Fields of Isis. Well, last game they just played casually. Not tournament match or anything, just they played it casually because they wanted to play, since that's the thing they do. They play each other very often. Anyhow, Google Frog won the first couple matches. The first one was, I think, more even than Akinem realized, but just surrendered after basically going, oh, I guess I don't have enough of the map. I'll lose. And the second one was a much more pitched battle, ending because of eraser assisted jacks. Because erasers are a thing now, finally. I'm glad to see that. Very glad to see that. I personally haven't been using them much myself. I, I you think I would because I tend to like going for tricky things, but no, I never really went for them. Good to see though. Anyway. This is going to be, like I said, Fields of Isis. So Fields of Isis is not people's favorite map for the most part, just because it's it's kind of, I mean, it's flat, which is okay for vehicles, but it's so choke point oriented that it tends to bog down. I mean, you often see Spiderbot Factory just to deal with the cliffs. I mean, it actually works pretty well too, or gunships as well, because there's so much, you can, it's so defensible. Like spiders and gunships and planes just get around the defenses. Jump bots sort of do, but they're too slow for the most part. But yeah, Shieldbot versus Light Vehicles, which... Light Vehicles, I can see. Shieldbot is unusual, but I'm curious to see what will happen with that. I mean, Shieldbot versus Light Vehicle, the matchup itself, it's a bit of a weird one. Like, I'm still not entirely sure what the matchup stat, like, what people would say the matchup is. Like, like, the stats overall. Usually, it's one of those things where you have, like, Shieldbot works fairly well because the leveler is the only thing the Shield Factory has to deal with it. That doesn't involve diving under the shields. But then Scorchers dive under shields, they would anyway, because they want to deal with max damage at close range. And then Ravagers don't do as much, they gotta resort to like Leveler, Slasher, maybe Dominatrix. And it produces some interesting setups. I'm really not sure if it's even, or if it's if it's favoring one side or another. Like, sometimes I think one thing, and then a few games come along and make me think, no, maybe not, maybe it's the opposite. So yeah, Shield and Light Vehicle is an odd matchup, to be sure. And it looks like Google Frog is going for the Slasher option. Go for the firepower to wear down shields when necessary. And also, on a map this big, it's really just for defenses. Like, basically, it's mobile defender. So, with that, we will see what happens. Because Google Frog, Google Frog often will go for slashers, if I'm not mistaken, will go for slashers out of Light Vehicle Factory a lot of the time if they want to go for defenses. Because they're mobile defenders. Like, that's what they do. So you don't have to be focused on building defenders. They can just go from choke point to choke point and... They probably won't, they'll probably stick around here for the most part. But they could if they wanted to. While Akram, on the other hand, I mean, both players can be building around the back. Like, that's the thing about Fields of Isis. Because of the fact that you have this choke point pretty easily defended, you essentially have 20 metal for free. Just about. Like, there's... Yeah, because there's 10 expand... There, there are 10 spots. And each of them is 1.8. So you get a little under 20 metal for free. When you, the, when you count the commander, it's like 22, without having to even worry about defending it. That's a factory with a caretaker. That is a lot of units, or two factories if you really want to. Usually a factory with a caretaker. And then you just set up a geothermal plant, and that gives you a ton of overdrive, and that gives you even more metal for free. And just even with the power you have normally, there's so much metal you can get for free. Before you even have to get a contested areas, which is the main reason that people don't really like it. Like, it's so choke pointy, there's so much that's easily defended that just you can't do anything about, you can't really harass. But let's not complain about the map too much. Even though there's really not much else happening right now, Akinem just has the one dirtbag hitting the Scorch- or hitting the Slashers, which can't do much. Except die. It just bury itself into a mountain and die. I mean, I can see, you know, use the dirtbags for scouts. That's actually a really good idea. That's always a good idea. The dirtbags are so cheap, not using them for scout is a mistake. Akram at this point, however, is a bit ahead. They've really pushed up front. And Google Frog is pushing their economy up into the more contested area as well, but Akram did it far faster. However, we'll see if this is like the first game, because the first game, Akram did get an economic lead, a very slight one, early on, and it didn't pan out. It did not pay off. And Google Frog is also going for a geothermal plant, and are they going to lose... Yeah, it looks like they are going to lose most of their slashes here. And inside Google Frog's... Or Akronim's territory too. Now Akronim 
Knowing them, they probably will make a Caretaker first, but they have gotten a bit better about not relying on Caretakers for Reclaim. They just have a tendency to go for them. But yeah, Geothermal Plant's done, which means loads of energy available for Overdrive, and also if that gets linked up to the grid, that's going to be loads of energy being supplied to the grid for Overdrive. So Google Frog is in a very, very nice position right now, despite having fewer Metal Extractors. Because that's just how this map goes. I wonder when Akron's going to build that. They're going to have to build their own geothermal plant if they want to stay on par. And interestingly, gone for the Ravagers, despite them not being especially good against Shield Balls. Now, given that Akron didn't really have their Shield Balls set up at this point, I'm not surprised, but this is still going to be a bit difficult. Now, the Leveler, of course, is a problem for Shield Balls. That's why it's often used. You'll often see Leveler used versus the Shield Ball, just because the splash damage radius is enough for the Thugs. Not enough for Felons, mind you. Felons will beat Levelers. Or at least, they'll they won't beat Levelers, because Levelers are too tough. The Levelers will eat all the shields when the Felon is trying to kill them. But they won't be able to hit the Felon with splash damage. They will be able to hit Thugs, though, and that's an important thing. And that's one of the things that I've, I've generally found the matchup hinges on, is the interaction of Levelers and Shields. But once a full shield ball is up, especially with Felon Thug, it can be tough to dislodge for vehicles. But it looks like that may not even be happening. It looks like Google Frog's gonna try to stop that from even starting. And at this point, kind of forcing Aquanim into more of a Raider focused build. And Aquanim, while they may not want that, it's actually not gonna work out too badly. The dirtbags providing some nice support. Yeah, these scorches here not allowing Google Frog to get through without having to have a little bit of bandits. Not able to build up their shield ball, I'm sure they would love to, but they aren't able to yet. So right now, Google Frog is... Well, on the south side, they had a pretty... Well, they actually are not in the best position. They're probably going to lose most of these scorches if they don't escape with them. On the north side, being forced to retreat, but still putting enough pressure on Akron that Google Frog can continue to build up. Get, I mean, none of their economy quite as well set up as I think it should be, but it's still pretty well set up. And of course, getting the contested areas, well, areas just outside of the more protected spots in their side of the map. So they're having a much stronger economy right now. Much stronger economy, much stronger production. Going for the gunship plant, while Akronim, on the other hand, sticking to Shieldbot, haven't even gotten their base shield ball yet. They haven't gotten the thing that they're probably trying to go for. Though on this map, a shield ball is hard to do. It's not impossible, but with the choke points, it actually makes it a lot easier than most maps of this size. Just because they just go from choke point to choke point, and the shield ball ends up protecting the entire choke point. But at this point... Those Scorchers are not allowing the Shield Ball to build up. Now, of course, if a Felon were built, that would be it. Ooh, and we see there are Valkyries coming in. What are we dropping today? Are we dropping Slashers? Are we dropping Scorchers? Are we dropping Wolverines? Which would make no sense. But I suppose we could. I'm curious to see what's being dropped. Levelers would probably be the most likely thing, but Levelers aren't being built right now. It's Wolverines that are being built. Seriously? Is this... No, that can't be right. It's not going to be a Wolverine drop, is it? That's probably not going to be a frontline drop. No, just Masons, just for expedience sake. But yeah, once that Felon's out, those Scorchers are done. If the Felon comes out. At this point, the game's actually fairly even. I mean, Arkham is a bit... I well, mean, that's much overdrive. Pretty even for overdrive, pretty even for economy overall. Just, yeah, fairly even. And Spider probably going for Crib as just the finisher. Which I could sort of see, given the amount of health it has, and the fact that you can't just go up here and set up a very nice artillery position. That's what I expect to have happen. And there's the Aspis, but no Felon. All the support units being built up first... If they are being going for Felon, I don't even know that they are anymore. I'm, I'm seriously suspecting they're just going for Dirtbag Fronted Shield Ball. Like, Dirtbag Armored Shield Ball to try to just push this out. But that's it. If anything else comes in, and what are we getting? We are getting Scorcher Drop! Into the back of the base, most likely. Looks like this is probably going to go around here, and then go up back here, and then go across this side of the base and tear everything apart. And that is exactly what is happening. Pretty much to the positions themselves. So Akronim be going for their big attack. <laughs> Notice that the choke point is a little bit empty, a little bit too, well, possibly too late. They definitely see these drops now, though. This is going to be disastrous. This may end the game. They will lose that Geoplant. They'll lose all these metal extractors. Actually, the Geoplant's going to be a boon to them, because it's going to kill off, well, a couple of the Scorchers. 
Their economy pretty heavily damaged, but honestly recoverable by this point. The downside is the fact that they're pushed back. Google Frog will likely push in with a secondary force at the same time. But Aquanim already prepared for that. Not pulling everything back, just pulling enough that they can defend with. Still keeping a decent force up front so they don't lose everything. Now this side's going to be a bit harder for both sides, just because of the solar plants. I mean, on the one hand, the solar plant's going to distract those scorches for a while, but on the other hand, it's going to be a bit tricky to move about. Definitely. Oh, actually, never mind. No, Akinum very wisely spacing these out, so the scorchers will have to slalom them a little bit. They can't easily go through, but the bots have no problem. The only downside, of course, being for the rogues, even though they can fire over, that firing over is only so powerful. Now the rogues, that rogue line's got to hold. That rogue line doesn't hold, then it's gonna be, it's gonna be game. And even as it is, these scorchers are dealing a huge amount of damage. I mean, the bandits just now able to get in, but that, that was a few convicts too many lost. However, that is a healthy amount of reclaim. The important thing right now is to get that reclaim. Like 2,000 metal of reclaim, if Akinum takes all that, they should be able to level this. Should be able to even this out, and then of course, they are rebuilding as they should. Very good, that's exactly what they want to do. The only thing is they were relying a lot on their overdrive, and that was the geothermal plant. Didn't have both geoplants, just the one. So if they build both, that'll probably bring them back to a very, very powerful position. But even with just the one, that will bring them even. But then again, is there another drop coming? And the answer is no. No, there is not. There is, in fact, going to be several rapiers coming. Or actually already out. And there's the crab. There's the crab I was talking about. Which is going to be... Okay, this is going to be tough. I mean, being slowed, on top of the fact that it can't get into a very comfortable position, Akinum's commander is going to go down, and that crab is going to go down very soon after. It's going to get shifted, probably, and... Is it? Well, not enough. Not enough to be a problem. Like, Google Frog is actually putting a lot of risk in this. They need to basically win on these attacks. They are, however, winning on these attacks. But if they didn't win on these attacks, they'd... The amount of reclaim they've been donating, the amount of metal that Akuna has been taking as a result of this, or potentially could take, that's... That could be game-changing. And, well, the Spider Factory's down, but the crab's still up. That crab's the main thing. If that Spider Factory was up, that'd be nice. The crab goes down, though I think that's when Akuna will surrender. If the crab goes down, and the crab isn't a very... No, Akron is already surrendering, realizing the crab has no opportunity, and even then... Yeah, rebuilding from there is going to be tough. They lost their shield ball. Like, the thing with shields is that they have the setup time. That's the big thing. But, I don't know, it was still a little surprising. Very nice drop, though. I was, I was, that was cool. That was a good drop. Google Frog does like their drops, so no surprises there. I'm a little surprised that Akron didn't build on both Geoplants if they were going to try to invest in Overdrive. And other than that, it seemed pretty solid. Of course, a good thing to bear in mind with Fields of Isis is the fact that drops in the back can happen. So setting up a couple Lotuses in the back, not a bad idea. We actually see that Google Frog did exactly that, just in case such a situation were to happen. Not on their main base, though, surprisingly enough. But yeah, the other side, they did have Lotuses set up just in case stuff came through, either through here or just dropped in. Not not here though, surprisingly. So yeah, if the same if Akron did the same thing right into Google Frog's main base, they would have they would have been very successful. Anyway, that is it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. There'll probably be clan wars on Saturday. I honestly don't know. It's always a little up in the air. The thing is the format's not fully decided on yet or the timing is people aren't there aren't a huge amount of clans is the biggest thing. So people aren't always sure. So either it'll be clan wars or just matches like these ones. Nothing next Wednesday, though. I'm going to be out next Wednesday. But yeah, this Saturday. The usual thing. So, tune in for that. But for now, I say good night and thank you for watching.